Hi everybody. Yesterday I caught two small baby red-eared slider turtles in a lake near my home and I want to bring them into my classroom and keep them as a classroom pet for the duration of the school year. So I went ahead and set up this 20 gallon tank. Let's take a look. This 20 gallon tank is 30 inches long, 12 inches wide, and 12 inches tall. Now you could get 20 gallon tanks in all sorts of shapes, but this configuration is pretty standard, which makes it easy to find tops that fit. The 12 inch height allows enough depth to keep all of your filters submerged and running properly, and it's easy to reach into the tank for cleaning. Here at the top of the tank, I'm using a metal screen top. Back here, I have an LED light strip to light up the tank. And here, I have a special turtle-specific bulb that gives off the ultraviolet B wavelength of light, UVB light. This is a type of light naturally produced by the sun, and it allows for the turtles to synthesize vitamin D, which in turn helps them absorb calcium, a substance essential for bone development. The UVB light should be positioned directly above the basking zone, maybe 6 to 10 inches or so. You could find UVB lights and fixtures in different wattages to suit your needs. Red-eared sliders of all sizes instinctively know to climb out of the water and bask under these lights. Basking is essential for healthy shell development, so the proper lights and structures for basking are essential. I keep both lights on for about 12 hours a day to replicate the natural summer daylight schedule here in Michigan. For filtration, I'm using two filters. This dark green one here is perfect for a 20 gallon tank. It pumps around 100 gallons of water per hour. Uh, any filter or pump that moves more than 150 gallons per hour will create too much water movement throughout the tank, so keep the GPH below 150. This filter is really easy to maintain. The filter just slides up and out like this. You could rinse the filter and replace the carbon inside the filter bag and then pop them back in. You don't need to put a new filter in every month. Just rinse the gunky stuff off the filter and reload it with some new carbon and you're good to go. There'll be a lot of beneficial bacteria on the old filter and if you do replace it with a new one, you're going to lose all of that essential bacteria that helps maintain healthy water conditions. The big rock over here is actually a filter that operates in the same way as the green one. You can remove the lid like this to access the filters and pump. The filters, pumps, and hoses are all neatly hidden inside the plastic rock, giving the tank a natural and clean appearance. I also like the fact that there is some extra space inside here, so you could add additional filter media like an extra bag of carbon, which will really help reduce the stinky turtle smells. Now the only thing to watch out though for with this kind of filter is that the turtles are able to climb it and get on top. A larger turtle could very easily push his way out through the screen top, so if you have larger turtles, you may not want to use this filter unless your tank is tall enough to prevent them from climbing out. After having aquatic turtles as pets for over 30 years, I really like the idea of a glass bottom tank, as opposed to using some sort of sand or gravel. Sand looks nice, and it's mostly safe for red-eared sliders but it's difficult to clean and the sand can damage the filter impellers when it gets sucked into the pump. Gravel is really not suitable for a, a turtle tank. There's been a lot of cases of turtles eating the gravel and if they do this, it could really block up their digestive system, potentially leading to death. To get a more natural look, I like to place several flat stones, essentially tiling the bottom of the tank with them. So when it's time to clean the tank, all I have to do is just pull them out. All of the decorations here are made of plastics and resins. Going all natural with live plants is an appealing concept, but turtles can be very aggressive and clumsy swimmers. They will very quickly rip up live plants and then leave all the shredded plant parts floating around in the tank to clog up your filters or rot and pollute the water. For a turtle tank, go with the plastic plants that have a heavy base so they sink and stay put. And as for water temperature, no heater is necessary, not for these guys. Room temperature is just fine. Here in Michigan, where I found these red-eared sliders, temperatures can drop to negative 20 in the winter and over 100 on some summer days. The water temperature will vary about the same amount. So no, you're not going to kill your turtles like you might tropical fish if the temp fluctuates a few degrees in your house. For food, I'm using the two brands you see here. Both of these foods are still a bit big for these tiny turtles, so I try to grind and break them up a bit before tossing them in the tank. Let's see if we could get them to eat.
I also like to feed my turtles frozen fish food. The cube here contains various seaweeds, fish meal, and crustacean meat. Turtles are very messy eaters, and uh, turtles in general are very messy pets. So plan on rinsing your filters out frequently and plan on doing water changes every few days. Well, it's time to wrap things up. I hope you found some useful information here. If you did, remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching, everyone.